Good morning everyone. We are discussing the different uh, topics in internal medicine. Today let us discuss about uh, the one case. Okay. Mm, okay, I am going to present the history. The history was taken by my junior resident. Mm, I am presenting a case history of 70 years old male uh, who, from Siraha, Hindu by religion, farmer by occupation who had not received any formal education. Uh, who was presented yesterday and the informant of uh, informant was the patient and his son and the history is adequate and the reliable okay now with the presenting complaint of the bilateral uh, lower limb swelling for one week and shortness of breath for one week so what are the possibilities here elderly male uh, with bilateral lower lip swelling and the shortness of breath for uh, one weeks. So when someone complains the bilateral leg, leg swelling, what comes in our mind? Which system comes in our mind? Definitely a cardiovascular system comes in our mind. A second is might be renal system because uh, like when a renal system and third one may be the hepatobiliary system or fourth one may be the respiratory system. So these are the possibilities here the every system uh, is the possible here and shortness of breath for one week if there is shortness of breath then we will uh, will think more about the cardiovascular system then the pulmonary uh, pulmonary system with a respiratory system or the uh, renal system so the possibilities here are the number one possibility is there is there might be involvement of cardiovascular system second possibility is renal system and third possibility is the uh, respiratory system these are the possibilities uh, of the system involvement in this patient uh, so you at this moment of the time like you need to know what are the cardinal symptom of the respiratory system cardiovascular system and the renal system okay uh, the cardinal systems uh, symptoms of the cardiovascular systems are uh, like anasarca then the shortness of breath, then the uh, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, then the orthopnea, uh, then sometimes the patient can have the pre-syncope and the syncope, then palpitation, fatigability, uh, these are the cardinal symptoms of the cardiovascular system. Whereas the cardinal symptoms of the respiratory system are like the shortness of breath, cough, production of the sputum, coughing out of blood, chest pain noisy breathing these are the six cardinal symptoms of the respiratory system and the cardinal symptom of the renal system are like anasarca low urine output passage of blood in urine flank pain yes these are the common uh, cardinal symptoms of the renal system that is what you need to know about the cardinal symptoms then the history of present illness the may, my patient was apparently well one week back prior to this presentation when he developed the swelling of bilateral lower limbs, which was first noticed as tightening of his shoes and slippers, and his, his son also noticed the fullness of both ankle with indentation and improving of the socks, uh, sorry, imprinting of the socks around the ankle. Swelling of the bilateral lower limb was insidious in onset, progressive in nature. It was bilaterally symmetrical, non-painful. An extend up to the level of bilateral knee in around one week period. Patient also developed the swelling of bilateral upper limb after three days, but there was no facial swelling or abdominal distension. There was no history of the local trauma and joint pain. There is no history of decreased urine output or passage of reddish color urine and frothy urine. There is no history of discoloration of eyes. I think this is very good history regarding the swelling of. So he uh, he's trying to tell that his patient had developed the swelling that started from the legs and like progress up to the knee and there is also the involvement of the face as well as sorry there is also involvement in the bilateral upper limb as well but there is no like facial swelling and the um, abdominal distension yes. So as a beginner so how he had taken the history you have to analyze. So he have taken that like. Uh, like when you are taking the history of the swelling in the lower limb you, you are supposed to take whether 
and there is a tightening of the shoes or the slippers or not because uh, like that is the first symptoms that the patient will uh, patient uh, will notice and second when you are taking the whether there is swelling in the upper limb or not then you have to ask whether there is tightening of the rings or not whether there is a tightening of the watch or not okay these are the history we are supposed to take in the abdomen you have to say whether there is tightening of previously fitted paints or not okay uh, these are the history uh, in the facial swelling whether the other patient other uh, patient attendants notice the facial swelling or not whether there is difficulty in opening the eyes or not this is how you, you are supposed to take the history of the swelling and uh, he had also asked regarding the indentation mean that there is the swelling which is of the pitting type and there are certain cause of the pitting type of the swelling we know that it may be the cardiovascular cause it may be the renal cause or like that like that okay okay very good history and he had also taken the nice history like there is no history of trauma sometimes like bilateral uh, blade trauma can cause swelling uh, like sometimes uh, like uh, he had also uh, ruled out it's like there is no other urinary symptoms to show that he is, uh, he is trying to rule out the renal symptoms and by asking the history regarding alloy discoloration he is trying to rule out the hepatobiliary system so but only only listening to the um, uh, history of the swelling probably it might be suffering from certain cardiovascular disease cardiovascular disease or uh, yeah cardiovascular disease and then regarding the second complaint patient also complained of the shortness of breath for one week which was insidious onset and gradually progressive initially patient noticed is uh, he was short of breath only on hurrying on the level ground and walking up stair but he was comfortable at rest during sleep at that time since three days prior to this presentation patient had shortness of breath even on walking to the bathroom which was few meters away from his house and walking around his house he also said that since three days he became more short of breath during night time after two to three hours of sleep so that he had to wake up and had to stand sitting position hanging his feet by the side of the bed then shortness of breath relief in about half hour, hour since three days he is using two pillows at night during sleep to make himself comfortable except for this episode patient denied history of shortness uh, shortness of breath at rest or immediately after lying down on the bed okay but, uh, basically how the short there there was also history of shortness which is progressive in in nature but he had taken one uh, important history regarding like his patient uh, was having the sort of breath after two to three hours of sleep which get relieved after taking the sitting position for 30 minutes it's the typical history of the pnd so paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea is a condition where the patient had shortness of breath after two to three hours of sleep that get relieved uh, by 30 to 45 minutes after taking sitting position that's the pnd and when there is a PND, it's usually suggestive of the left ventricular failure or left sided heart failure. Okay, the cause for the PND is the one of the important questions uh, that your teacher will ask you in your exam. The, the cause of the PND is like when you are like uh, one important cause the redistribution of the blood uh, sorry fluids. Like when you are taking standing position, there is more gravitational force in the legs, so that's the fluid escape from the intravascular space to the interstitial space. Yes, but when you are taking the supine position, that fluid from the interstitial space will come to the intravascular space, and that from there it come it will come to the heart, and heart is already compromised, then the patient complains the shortness of breath. That's the one important reason for the PNG. Second important reason may be when you are uh, when you are like sleeping. Your tidal volume is low. One is one another tidal volume is low. Third important is the onset of the REM sleep after two to three hours of sleep. Like when you go to the sleep, when you go to the bed, like it has two stages. One is non-REM stage and REM stage. In the non-REM stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, and then then start the REM sleep. In the REM sleep, there is sympathetic overdrive. There is tachycardia, and as you know, when there is a tachycardia, like then there will be the increase in uh, LV pressures and that cause the like that can that can cause the pulmonary edema and that may be the reason for the PND. Another reason might be like when patient is taking the supine like your diaphragm is going up like that and that like that may uh, like impair the diaphragmatic functions and these are the reason for the PND. But do not forget about the redistribution of the uh, fluids that is a very important reason for the PND. And if someone complains the PND, then you should always think about the heart failure because it is one of the cardinal symptoms of the heart failure. Okay. 
so there is there, there was no history of chest pain, cough, abnormal awareness of heartbeat, dizziness, syncope, and there is no history of fever, no bilious discoloration of tongue and finger. So uh, yes, there so definitely no ischemic event or no, no any feature of the dizziness and syncope. Usually when there is a dizziness and syncope, it's usually the history of the uh, like aortic stenosis or a heart failure with low ejection fraction there can be dizziness and syncope. There is no history of alloys discoloration of the body, abdominal pain, altered sensorium, no history of snoring or seasonal variation of shortness of breath. With all this complaint, uh, my, my patient uh, come to the BBK as emergency where he was examined, blood and urine inve investigation were seen, chest x-ray ECG were done. He was said that he has some problem related to his heart and he was treated with IV medication after his, his urine output increases and his shortness of breath improved swelling of bile lower, lower limb decrease now he is able to sleep even without with one pillow at night yes so with all investigation he was given some medication which increases his, his uh, urine output probably uh, that was the diuretics and uh, yeah and that was the diuretics so mean that the patient might be have uh, might be having the feature of pulmonary edema that uh, that uh, that gets improved with the use of diuretics okay Okay, so till now the, the this is a yeah, so we have information that's the elderly male who is having the uh, progressive uh, anasarca and the progressive dyspnea with uh, PND uh, PND. Uh, so my provisional diagnosis at this moment in time uh, is definitely this is a case of the uh, congestive cardiac failure, congestive cardiac failure etiology. Uh, till now is very difficult to say, but. Uh, uh, it's very very difficult to see, but uh, provisional diagnosis is congestive cardiac cardiac failure. Uh, probably, definitely, uh, there might be the involvement of left side. It may be uh, like uh, from if I start from the pericardium, unlikely, and then myocardium. Yes, there can be a cardiomyopathies. Uh, this may be the presentation of cardiomyopathy, especially the dilated cardiomyopathy or restrictive cardiomyopathies. This may be the presentation, and if you go to the valve, then. And this presentation might be the feature of uh, like mitral stenosis, mit valvular heart, mitral stenosis is possible. But regarding the ears, it's unlikely to have the mitral stenosis because mitral stenosis is like the onset of mitral stenosis is relatively in uh, younger age than this, okay, near, near about 35, 40, 45. So, definitely, I will think about the involvement of myocardium 1, and definitely, and the possibility is my patient can have the some form of diastolic heart failure that can occur in the uh, LV, LV uh, dysfunction as occurring uh, like uh, hypo, uh, like chronic hypertension yes okay then in the past history there is history of systemic hypertension since two years and patient was diagnosed as hypertension on his routine evaluation in a nearby health center he was then advised to take one tablet medication at night before sleep every day he continued taking medication but did not go for follow-up yes like there is significant uh, like history like he was uh, like suffering from this systemic hypertension and was taking the medications he was compliant but like he's not following the uh, opd phases so we didn't know the exact status whether his bp was controlled or not uh, okay after one month patient had noticed uh, in like before uh, about one month ago patient noticed fresh blood uh, in his stool which was painless he visited BBK ER where he was said to have piles and he was treated with two pint of blood transfusion and uh, other topical medication, bleeding PS of thyroid thereafter. Okay. So, he had history of the hemorrhoids one month back and that caused the anemia and because of which the blood was transfused. Okay. There is no history of diabetes mellitus and PTV in the past. In the personal history, he is non smoker, he does not con uh, consume the alcohol, but he had history of the. Uh, chewing tobacco and around is of 20 years and he continued till one month back uh, due to current illness his sleep was disturbed and there is no change in the appetite occupation history is a farmer by occupations and like he works on the field cultivate rice wheat meat and seasonal vegetables uh, socioeconomic history he lives in the kocha house in sira with separate kitchen and the ventilations and like in the in the kupusami scale he comes in the lower middle class family the family is free, he lives in a joint family and there is no unnatural death in the family. There is no history of diabetes, hypertension and PTB in the family. In the treatment history, he was taking the telmisartan for TMZ for last two years and there is no any drug allergy history known. Oh, 
So here this he's taken the nice history and then if you have to summarize this patient then it's a 70 year old male tobacco chewer with a uh, history of systemic hypertension for two years and under tell me certain therapy presented with progressive symmetrical bilateral painless uh, pitting edema uh, pitting edema of the lower limbs for one week and inside is under that progressive uh, Disney associated the PND for one week. Uh, probably uh, he is having the uh, it's the case of the congestive cardiac failure and probable cause may be the diastolic uh, dysfunction due to systemic hypertension okay and the precipitation may be uh, because of the anemia or uncontrolled hypertension we do not know that that should be confirmed in the history that is what we have discussed about the history taking so basically when you are dealing with this type of history then the important areas are like as we have already discussed what are the cardinal symptoms of the cardiovascular then respiratory then renal unit you, you have to know then uh, how you are supposed to take uh, the history of leg are uh, like swelling of the body uh, and then then what are the DDs and how we are going to rule out the DDs and regarding the shortness of breath how you have, how you have to rule out the respiratory symptoms and how you have to rule out the renal systems and history of PND and orthopnea usually suggests the cardiovascular system that we know and how the history of PND uh, like we have discussed these things and what are the significant past history personal history that, that that should be taken we have discussed. I think we have you have uh, we have uh, you have uh, learned something about the history history taking of, of the patient with cardiovascular system involvement. Uh, Thank you, thank you very much for your uh, attention and concentration. If you have any comments regarding this uh, case, you can write in the comment section. I will be happy to answer your comment. Thank you.